Rejection begins in a very private place, that is deep in the heart. In order for healing to come into the heart, you have to be willing to surrender it all to God. The Bible tells us if any man be in Christ he is a new creature. Old things are passed away all things become new. Allow God to address that rejected place, that feels stuck, and receive God's love today. He is saying to you today, I love you and because I love you, I want to lead you, direct you, guide you, protect you, go before you, and bring you into your destiny. The enemy may have destabilized you through rejection, but I have called and chosen, accept and called you beloved. With that in mind, let's get to the story. Hello Shelly, how are you today? Did you deliberately, made me wait for one hour or did something happen beyond your control, that causes you to be one hour late? I, I, I? Shelly did not know how to answer, she was shocked at what Rebecca Stanton asked, then Rebecca says. It's okay, you don't have to answer that. Anyway thank you for coming. Have a seat, I don't bite. So you are still looking for work? Yes. Good news, my friend still have the job available, that I mentioned to you, three weeks ago. You can start first thing Monday morning, you do not have to go for an interview, I have recommended you. What, I got the job, just like that. I cannot thank you enough, I am really really sorry for making you wait. Please, I am so sorry Mrs. Stanton. Call me Rebecca. I have a big favor to ask you. Oh? As this is the weekend and we both will only be working Monday to Friday, I would love for you to do me a favor. What is it? Immediately Shelley's guard was up, and she began to think so she find me a job, and now she wants me to clean her house, to be her cleaning lady. Then Shelley thought, you know what, I always knew with everything there is a catch. She got me a job, and now I am her maid. It's okay, I will clean her house, besides, I would like to see this husband, that she is boasting about. However, Shelley was very shocked when Rebecca says this. And no, it is not to clean my house. Shelley who knew what she was thinking about was very shocked at Rebecca's response, she wonders, can this woman read my mind? I would like to introduce you to someone, but first, I would like to tell you her story. I would like us to meet here once a week on the weekend, after my morning walk, so that I could share her story with you. I will share a little bit today. Her name is Shelley, just like you. However, over time she did not use that name anymore. Rebecca started to tell Shelley, the other Shelley's story. Meanwhile, at Serenity's place. Thanks for the drink and please remember what I asked, all three questions, I will continue to pray for you my friend. It is always good to come and see you. Send my regards to your mother, I know that she does not remember me, but do it all the same. I love you Serenity, but the Lord loves you more. I will give you a call the moment I get home. Please do that. Bye. Bye my friend. Mighty woman of God. Moments later. Why does Teresa always says the same thing each time she visits and we part ways? I remembered the first time, I asked her why she says this she just said. I have called those things that are not as if they are, that it happened. I have been inviting you since our teen years, and look we are both in our late twenties almost double the years later, and here you are, you came. It was wonderful of you to come serenity, mighty woman of God. What did you think, how was the service? me, mighty woman of God, anyway, let's not go there. What struck me about the service and what stood out to me, was the scripture that he mentioned, about perfect love. You mean 1 John 4 18, which says, there is no fear in love? But perfect love cast out fear, because fear torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. Yes that's the one. What does he mean that perfect love cast out all fear? If we are living in fear, we are ignorant of perfect love of God. In that same passage of scripture before, we are encouraged to love one another, and if we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. 
If you are interested in living a life without fear, John tells us there is a way to do so. Indeed, there is a perfect love that drives out all fear, and this is the first step we must take. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Uh, 1 John 4 11. God instruct us in that same passage 1 John 4 20, If a man say, I love God, and hate his brother, he is a liar, for he that love not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Serenity my friend this means, that, we must first deal with our relationships with each other, before we can profess that we love God, whom we have not seen. And if you're afraid of facing a person or a situation in your life, God's love can help you put your fears to rest, as his perfect love deals with every reason's fear will throw at us to think about it in any other way, than the way of God. See why I know that you are a mighty woman of God, even if you don't see, and it has not happened yet in the physical. The fact that you observed and took away the very nature of God, which is love, God gives perfect love tell me serenity, that God is going to use you mightily in the area of love to help those that feels unloved. Whatever area that we will be great in, that is the area that the enemy will fight us, and in many case he will start in our childhood, always remember that my friend, the mighty woman of God. Why did this memory came back to me, that means with all my mother's teaching to the neighbors, and all who would listen, could it mean that she did not truly understand God, because if she did she would probably realize that she should have loved me, no matter what, because she says she is serving someone who is called love. I do not know why this memory came back to me, but I think that I should look up this 1 John 4 scripture. Meanwhile, William are you okay? Why did you scream out like that? This is the problem I have with you Tina. You don't hear me at all. And the sad thing is at the time when I need you, you never hear me. You are not there for me at all. I am very confused. I came when I heard you scream out. I am here right in front of you, and you are still complaining that I do not hear you. I do not understand William. I really do not understand what you are saying. Do you have any idea how long I have been calling you? and yet you ignored me. Wow. I ignored you and yet I am here standing in front of you William. Did it occur to you, that I did not hear you, and it is only when I heard, I came. You still have not said why you called, I am just glad that Rhea is sleeping, because that scream you made when you called my name, one would think that you are dying. Can you tell me what it is William, Hope Town is due home any minute, and I do not want him to think that we are fighting again. That boy again. That was the reason why I was calling you. You see Tina, this boy came so soon after we got together, and we did not get to spend time with each other. So I have the idea that we should put him in boarding school, for a few years, until we sort out ourselves, and then he could come back home. Really? Wow, and what should we do with Rhea? Is she going to a boarding school as well? No, no, not at all. I have no problem with Rhea. That boy bothers me too much. Yet you said that you don't hate him. I do not hate him Tina, I resent that way of thinking. Okay William you don't hate him, let me tell you that plan to send him away for a few years to boarding school will not happen. Why not? Let's see. Oh yes, boarding school takes money which we do not have, in case you have in mind, it is not funded by the government. Secondly. Hope Tan did not ask to be born, and if we had the money, sending him away to boarding school is not the solution William, you must look within yourself to see why you cannot stand the sight of your only son. I told you a few days ago that you hated him, you denied it. I even brought up how your own father treated you, and that could be the reason why you treat Hope Tan in the similar way, that your father treated you, yet you denied it. How old are you William? What kind of question is that? You know my age. Are you a grown man, William? Tina, you are upsetting me so much. What kind of questions are these? Have you ever had any thoughts about how your father treated you, William? This made William even more angry, because that was precisely the thought that was in his mind earlier, and when the memory of what his father did came back it hurted him so much. Tina continues. The fact that you got so upset tells me that you have been, or were thinking about what your father did to you. You a grown man is still hurting, yet again, 
This is the same way you want to damage your son. The same thing that your father did you are doing it to him. You convinced yourself, you are not like your father, but William, you are the exact replica of him, and the way that you are treating Hope Town is not right. He is going to grow up one day William, and if you continue, you will miss out big time. I have to go attend to what I'm cooking, if you have something more that you want to say to me, I am in the kitchen. Meanwhile, Hope Tan please remember what my dad told me to tell you. He said although the Bible starts in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, he think that it would be very beneficial for you and your parents to start to read the book of 1 John. It is not long, it talks about how we must love each other. That God is love, and that we should love one another. Remember, I gave you my dad's number, if you have any questions, you could call him. Alberto, I cannot wait to get home, to start reading the Bible. I am going to do my homework in record time, and then race into my room, and began reading, and yes any questions that I have, I will call your dad. I find it a little bit weird what you said your mom said the hope tan. That you should not tell your dad about it, but instead read it in your room. I am amazed, that she did not say that she would read it together with you. You are right Alberto, I never thought about it, until you said it. It is weird that she did not say, that she would read it with me. She just told me to wait to show it to my dad and that she will tell me when, and to keep it in my room and read it. I wonder why she did not say that she would like to read it too. I think I will ask her when I get home. Back with Rebecca and Shelly, at the park. Shelly was only 8 years old, when her mother sent her to her sister to live. You see her sister did not have children of her own, though she was very wealthy, she was barren, and so she could not have children. After the first week Shelly's aunt began to show her true colors by treating Shelly badly. One day after school Shelly was watching a children program, it was very funny and so Shelly was laughing, enjoying the children program. She walked over to the TV and turned it off, and then she began cursing her. She even called her mother, her own sister all kinds of names saying, she pushed out all these children, and do not know how to take care of them and she send you here to eat off my food and lays around. It was a big puzzle for Shelly because, her aunt was the one who begged for Shelly to come and live with her, that she would take care of her like her own. But what Shelly's mother did not know was that her own sister who was also sent to live with an aunt who mistreated her as well, needed healing from God, herself. She and her husband was poor, and was often helped by her sister, so she had no idea that she had hidden issues and even hatred towards her sister as well. She was a churchgoer, well liked in the community, someone who was also praying for people, and yet she had hidden and dealt with hurt and pain. She sound like someone I know. All the things that she wanted to say to her mother, who was no more in her sister. She took it out on her niece, she treated her very badly. She would say things like, she kept them all and send me away, and look at them all now, looking to me monthly to support them, I was not good enough to stay home like them. She was very angry and very very bitter. By the time Shelly was 15, her husband had passed, and things got much much worse for Shelly at home, she would go to school, she excelled in her grade, she did not know how, only when she got older that she realized that it had to be God, because of how bad her home life was, one day after she came home with her perfect report card and letter for valedictorian, she thought that her aunt would have been proud, but instead she said, well you have been doing home chores and cleaning, now you can do others things for me to show your appreciation of what I have done for you and your mother, over these years. She told Shelley, I have been the one supporting the entire family, keeping a roof over their heads, and so you have to start helping. She forces Shelley to go with old man in the name of taking care of the family. This went on from she was 15 until she was 18 years, many times Shelly wanted to run away, but she kept remembering the rest of the family that needed them to live so she stayed. Meanwhile, she kept getting better and better grades in school, she did not know how, because many times she felt numb. Every time the thought would come to her to run away, she would remember the condition of her family and so she stayed. At her graduation, after making the valedictorian speech, she was being congratulated by many people, she had received an award of recognition. Then this young man approached her, at first she did not realize who it was, until he said, it's Melvin, Cynthia's brother. 
Congratulations. Melvin was four years older than Shelley, and she only had met him a few times when she was much younger. He began to tell her that he finished college, helping his dad with the business and helping with the youth program at their church. He told her, you have grown into a beautiful young lady Shelley and I really like you. The few months, he tried to talk to Shelley and say nice things to her, and Shelley started liking him a lot. Anyway, one day he came to her aunt's home when Shelley was not there, and her aunt told him that he was wasting his time because Shelley was already involved with not one man, but several men. He had brought flowers for her and so he still left it there. He ran into her on the way, and he asked her about it. He said, I thought you told me you were single. He asked her, is there anyone in your life? Shelley did not know how to tell him what her aunt had her doing for a few years, and so she said, it's not like that, it's not what you think. He then asked, please tell me Shelley is there, someone in your life, because Carol my sister, your friend told me, that you do not have anyone, that you have been going to church, that you are all about school, church and home, yet your aunt says something differently. Please tell me Shelley, is there anyone? Shelley did not know how to answer him and she watched as he walked away. When she got home, she confronted her aunt and asked her what did you say to Ian. She responded I just told him the truth. What would a thriving godly young man knit with the likes of you, damaged goods? Who sleeps with most of the old men more than twice your age? Shelley could not believe what her aunt said, and so she made decision that night while her aunt slept that she would leave. She hated doing what her aunt had forced her to do for years, but it hurt her so deeply to see that this will be something that she will use to throw in her face. She had gotten accepted to a prestigious college full scholarship, and she was thinking to turn it down, but that night as her aunt slept, she put a few pieces of clothes in a bag pack and she left. What did she do after that? Her story is similar to someone I know. Oh Shelley, I am so sorry that I have to stop here. I have an appointment soon, normally I do not take weekend appointments, but this is a new contract, we acquire, and has a senior staff, I have to go oversee it. Can I give you a lift somewhere? No, it's okay, the walking is good for me, it give me time to think. I am sorry that I kept you waiting. Thank you so much for setting me up with this job, you will not regret recommending me. I will see you here next weekend, and I will come one hour earlier. I really want to hear more about Shelley. Shelley that will not be necessary, you do not have to come one hour early. I understand you, more than you know. Anyway, I have to get going. I cannot be late for the appointment. You know what, let me breathe a short word of prayer. My dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this meeting, that was ordained before the foundation of the earth. Thank you that both Shelley and I know how much you love us, and the many things you have done for us. Father keep us through this day, and continue to have your way into our lives, in Jesus name Amen. A few minutes later, things did not go as I thought they would, just like that, I got a job, with no interview. The story that Rebecca Stanton is telling, is so similar to my life. I cannot wait for next week to hear the rest. I wonder what happened to that Shelley, well I just have to be here next week to hear the rest of the story. Meanwhile, Hopetown you seem very quiet, are you okay? Did something happen at school? No mom, it is about the Bible, I collected it from Alberto. What about it? You know how you say to wait to tell dad about it, and to read it in my room? Yes. How come you never said that you would read it together with me? Why, why, did you ask that? Alberto and I was talking on the way home, and he was saying that it is going to be good when my dad learned about the Bible, and then I told him what you said to me, and so he found it weird that you were not interested to read it with me, while I wait to show my dad, and I thought so as well. Especially, since it will teach my dad how to treat me, then you should want to know what it says. I never said that I would not read it with you, Hope Tan. I just was not thinking about it at that moment. Anyway, go get change, and do your homework, dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Okay mom. Moments later, Hope Town is right, why I would not be interested in reading the Bible with him, I have read story books of all kinds to him and Rhea, 
Why would I not want to read the Bible with him, that is interested? That night Tina saw herself, she was very very young, and she was going with her father's friend, he said Tina, you have to help the family, your mother is now gone, and I cannot work, so my friend is willing to give a monthly compensation to us. I want you to go with him, you are the eldest, and this is how you will help the family. Why did that wicked memory that I buried deep came back into my mind? It is so sickening to me. My father did not want to work to take care of me and my siblings, and so he sent me to his friends, why is this memory coming back to me now? I hate it, and hate everything about what happened. I think I hate my dad, for what he did to me, passing me off like that. This feeling hurts so bad. My dad did not care about me, and now I married a man who does not care about his son. Not even William knows anything about my past. That's where it will remain in the past. That is all for this episode. Through this story we are seeing the different hats that those who have been rejected can wear. When we have been rejected is is very very painful, especially if as was done by a parent or parents. Which can birth various kinds of feelings in us. Our feelings towards our parents can be complicated. What we feel depends on how they treated us when we were growing up. It is our prayer that, as you understand the truth about God's love and come to know the great plans that he have for you, plans to prosper, not to harm, it will free you to let go off the pain of rejection and forgive those who hurt and rejected you. Bye and thank you for watching, see you soon in part 4. May God continue to bless and keep you. Have a wonderful day.